isn't this a beautiful view? This motivates me to do something which I haven't done for quite some time. Not bad for a beginner. Hmm. I was little short on the brown paint for hills, but I made a good judgment to go ahead and luckily I did finish. But that reminded me of a technique for precise measurements in situations where you're required to know the exact quantity the paint needed, assuming the thickness is constant. What would you have done if you were in such a situation? Let me share my idea with you. One approach can be filling the colored region with shapes of which we know the area. If we construct five rectangles which will fill the area, we get a final area covered by rectangles. Wait a second, but why rectangles? Why not triangles or some other random shapes? You'll understand the benefit of using rectangles shortly. Of course, there is some area which is left over even after filling all the rectangles. We can reduce this leftover area by increasing the number of rectangles. Let's now make the rectangles 10. Clearly, you can see the leftover area is reduced. Now take a second and think, under what condition can this leftover area be leased or go to zero? In other words, when can we maximize the area covered by the rectangles, making it closer to the area of the figure? One intelligent guess is by tending the number of rectangles to a very huge number or making it tend to infinity. You can see under such condition, the leftover area tends to zero. This kind of helps us or gives us an intuition to calculate the area, but how do we practically implement this using the mathematical knowledge we have? That is to calculate the sum of the area of these rectangles with infinitesimally small breadths. That's what we'll study in our next series of videos. Consider the sketch on the wall. For our convenience, we'll make it identical to the function f of x between the input values a and b. Now let's construct our rectangles to calculate the area. Let me start by inserting five rectangles of equal width into the figure. So that means width of each of the rectangles will be given by h equals b minus a by 5. And height of the individual rectangles will be given by f of a, f of a plus h, f of a plus 2h, f of a plus 3h and f of a plus 4h respectively. The sum of the areas of these rectangles if I add them all together will be given by the expression summation r varies from 0 to 4 f of a plus rh into h. Now, if we increase the number of rectangles to a large value and reduce their widths to an infinitesimally small values or tending to zero, the width of each of the rectangles will work out to h is equal to limit n tends to infinity b minus a by n. In this case, the sum of area of all the rectangles put together will equal to limit n tends to infinity summation r varies from zero to n minus one f of a plus rh into h. Therefore, you can see this expression which is a limit of sum gives us the area we are looking at. An alternate expression for representing this area expression is what you can see on the screen. Now, this is known as a definite integral and is read as integral a to b f of x dx. Here dx represent the infinitesimal width of the rectangles we just constructed. This method of calculation of area under the curve or integral a to b f of x dx by using limit of sum is known as integration by first principle or Riemann sum. So how can we summarize the idea of representing the area under the curve as the sum of infinite number of rectangles of infinitesimally small width? We can call it as integral a to b f of x dx is equal to limit n tends to infinity summation r varies from 0 to n minus 1 f of a plus rh multiplied by h. For more videos and live lectures on the JEE, click on the subscribe button now.